Very good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the video recording sessions uh, for Singapore stocks market uh, discussion. And uh, today's video, we are also going to talk about the US market trading uh, in the last 10 minutes or so. Okay, so uh, we're going to do a very uh, quick analysis on the Singapore market. How did it perform? And then how, uh, what are the Singapore stocks that are moving uh, strongly today? Okay, so uh, without further ado, let's take a look at the chart. Okay, so I believe everybody can see the screen over here. Uh, we are talking about uh, the Singapore uh, stock market right now, and uh, we are looking at the SDI index. Okay, so you can see SDI today actually closed as a uh, white candle. And uh, it in fact had a very strong opening and the closing was fantastic because uh, it closed up above its resistance and uh, it comes to above uh, 3204, which uh, we anticipated uh, this kind of movement uh, earlier. Uh, in fact, um, maybe uh, last week or rather the, uh, the week before, because last week uh, I actually sent you the uh, review uh, video. So the next major resistance to watch is 3233. 3, 3. So the question here is, can STI continue to uh, go up to test the 3233 uh, 3, 3 level? Now let's take a look at the uh, first important sector, which is the bank, which leads the STI most of the time. Now, if you look at the bank today, DBS has a very nice breakout above its resistance and uh, to a zone where it hasn't been uh, trading or it hasn't traded before um, and this is uh, considered as an all-time high level okay so uh, where dbs can hit to well uh, there's one way to do this is to project uh, the next slightly movement because the uh, stocks tend to move in such a magnitude and uh, of course uh, we may anticipate a uh, next movement to be around uh, 30, 40. Uh, but unfortunately, only DBS closed uh, this nice. Uh, OCBC unfortunately closed as a black candle as it retested its resistance over here. Okay. <clears throat> it uh, did not manage to break out from its resistance uh, around uh, 1195. And uh, it starts to pull back. And the closing suggests uh, further weakness because you can see as it hit this resistance, there are consecutive days of uh, black candle. So <clears throat> these are signs of weakness as the stocks tend to open higher and close lower. Open higher, close lower, open higher, close lower, and open higher, close lower. So uh, whether can you break the resistance? This is another question mark. So as I mentioned before, that uh, the banks don't move alone. So if DBS can continue to hit the next high, uh, OCB can hit, hit the next high. So uh, this is very much uh, in question right now. Then uh, let's take a look at UOB before we conclude. So you can see UOB uh, breaking out this morning, but unfortunately afternoon selling, push it lower back below its resistance. So uh, this is considered as a fail breakout. So um, with out of the three banks, the two banks had a few breakout, only DBS has a, a, a strong breakout, a successful breakout. So can DBS sustain higher? Now, one thing uh, that you need to note that uh, there's one article published uh, in Business Time or something I remember, um, that there is some uh, rebalancing act coming uh, by MSCI where they are going to uh, pare down uh, holdings in the three banks, uh, Singtel and Wilma, uh, to accommodate uh, C Limited. So this may uh, add some selling pressure to the bank. So if the bank were to uh, uh, go really low uh, from this rebalancing act, so we got to uh, watch out for the um, support level and see whether if we hit this support level, say like for example, UOB has a key support around 25, 18, this support level once tested, uh, it could mean change of trend. For OCBC, its key support level uh, is 11.52. Of course, uh, there are some minor support above it like 11.70, uh, 
I'm just going through the key support level, like uh, DBS key support level is 2766. So this is where uh, we have to watch because once it breaks below, um, it may uh, cause the stocks or these stocks to go down lower. Now, it may be a good news for those who doesn't have uh, uh, the, uh, the banks. Why? Because this gives you an opportunity to get into the banks and then start all over again before the banks start to go back to uh, its uh, heyday. I believe this is a temporary action. Um, case in point is where you can look at Yang Zijiang. Now, Yang Zijiang was uh, removed from the... Uh, Emski and what happened was that uh, it had a major sell down over here and that was the bottom created by the remover and you can see since then it has uh, Yang Zijiang has flourished all the way up and uh, from the bottom if we were to take a measurement we can see Yang Zijiang has gone up by a nice 49 percent already so uh, this may be a good news going forward for us if uh, the stocks were to have a uh, sell down. So uh, do watch out. <clears throat> so I would say that if you are really keen in the banks, uh, do uh, take care of your position. Do not overly expose uh, dollar cost average uh, as the, the banks uh, move lower for example uh, you may buy some at the high now but once it goes lower uh, start to average in, in. Uh, so this means that don't put um, every sense that you have right now at the top okay so uh, do watch for your position now um, <clears throat> let's uh, quickly go through the uh, tech counters or the tech sectors uh, over here uh, the tech sectors was pretty bullish uh, last uh, uh, I mean in March where you can see that uh, AEM really strongly on the 24th of March, all the way to the, you know, to the point where it start to consolidate over here. Okay, so the range that it is consolidating uh, is from uh, 408 to uh, 427. So we've got to watch if uh, AEM breaks out above 427, it may continue higher. Well, it pull back to 408 and breaks below 48, of course, uh, it may go back to its support level around 394. Uh, I would say that uh, starting from $4, right, uh, 398 rather, to uh, 394 okay. Uh, UMS is still pretty strong. You can see UMS stay at the top, but uh, it has been um, uh, struggling to uh, move up because uh, the AEM and uh, most of the tech counters are not moving. So you can see that uh, the good thing is uh, UMS closes uh, positive as compared to the rest. Uh, so you, you find that UMS will have a very nearby resistance at 1.40 to 1.41. So for those who are having UMS, since uh, we have been discussing it from here, uh, you may want to consider to protect some of your uh, positions uh, at this resistance level. So watch for this resistance level. Venture. Uh, a disappointing uh, closing, a strong opening, but the uh, momentum could not keep up as the stocks were sold down all the way to close uh, lower or flat. Okay, so uh, this is where uh, you may want to uh, take note of the support resistance. Okay, this, this is weakness um, where you can see that the, the market really not certain of its upside. So where people take opportunity to uh, sell down. Uh, so if it cannot uh, go up, of course, the support level to watch is 1991. But of course, if there's a change in mind by the stocks itself, uh, we want to see it breaks 2045. Now, of course, <clears throat> we want to, we would like to uh, project the outlook of uh, these counters. Uh, most uh, counters, if it has a, a strong earnings, uh, the outlook generally to be more positive, but of course, technically we need to see it breaks resistance. So we combine the outlook of the counter, like for example, uh, Venture has a very good result. Uh, future outlook is strong where uh, you can uh, refer to the news, business time, uh, the edge, uh, the uh, US market uh, tech counters, like for example, uh, the... Uh, 
Intel, they are building uh, plants, uh, 20, they are committing 20 billion to build the plants. Taiwan, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor, they are building uh, you know, uh, more plants, 100 billion committed so that uh, they can uh, grow and expand their uh, services and their products. So of course, um, this would help to uh, bring out our tech counters as well. Uh, but um, all this has to be technically proven by the chart. Like for example, it breaks above its resistance over here, because cross this high uh, to continue higher. So if it couldn't, it may uh, range from 1991 to uh, 2045. If it cannot hold a support level, the last line of defense is 1979, where if it breaks below, it may continue to go down further where it started off at 19. Uh, Franken struggles at the top. Again, this is the uh, double doji. So got to watch out. So if the double doji um, has a uh, lower closing, like uh, today is a black candle. So this is the first sign. So this is the first sign. So if we see consecutive uh, black candle closing, so we got to watch out for uh, more downward action. So uh, this is a, uh, a typical movement, I would say, from uh, this uh, Franken. Because it uh, seems like at the top, it tends to have a lot of uh, uncertainty. Like for example, over here, uh, it always formed uh, a lot of dojis over here. But uh, this pullback did not push the counter lower. So which one uh, would really uh, push the counter lower? So this is a tricky part. So we want to uh, see from its example, or uh, learn from the historical movement that uh, where uh, when is the uh, time where it's giving us warning that it's going to go down lower. Uh, one thing that you want to see here is that when Franken pulled back here, it held at this support level 129 and rebound. So once it rebound, you can see that it breaks above its resistance. So here, okay, so Franken pulled back, hold at support level, previous resistance turn support, rebound, did not go to resistance level 144, and then start to pull back and retest support. Uh, this is the warning sign. Now look at here, double doji again, pull back, okay, retest resistance immediately, break out. Okay, so now next, uh, will this pull back go lower and hit back 144? So this is one uh, very important uh, observation that you need to make. So the most important thing is if Franken can hold at this level at 150, it will be a, a good sign for these uh, counters where you may consolidate and then move up further again. Okay, uh, SIA, um, still consolidating overall. So we are going to move on to the transport sectors. So today the transport sectors, SIA and uh, SETS are pretty muted. You can see here, uh, SIA sets, uh, they did not really move. Actually, they are still consolidating, waiting for the next course of action. Uh, but SIA engineering is still uh, pretty positive today. Let's see where it closed today. So it closed higher at 222. Um, so the target is still at 2.3. The volume is pretty healthy. So I would say that SIA engineering is still uh, having a good upward movement towards uh, 230 possibly okay uh the other transport counter that is uh, doing well is actually comfort delgro very strong um very strong movement from comfort delgro today not bad closing uh, despite not closing at the highest of the day but uh, the white candle is still uh, respectable and uh, of course why comfort delgro is moving this strongly uh, probably because due to the uh, um, EV infrastructure that Singapore is building, uh, Comfort Delgro is building from that. So uh, let's see where Comfort Delgro uh, can hit to. So if Comfort Delgro can break above its resistance over here at 181, we may see more upside. Um, but of course, uh, we would like to have uh, some nice pullback like this, then uh, the upward movement will be more sustainable. Okay, next, uh, let's move on to the property uh, counters. So <clears throat> uh, I'm still receiving a lot of questions about uh, Capital Land Steel. So I'd just like to take this opportunity to uh, 
uh, highlight this deal to you. So uh, what is uh, Capital Land deal about? Um, basically, they are going to delist Capital Land and then uh, they are going to uh, um, they are going to so they are going to lease out this uh, capital land investment management so uh, the deal is uh, value at 410 and uh, what they are going to do is they are going to give you one to one share so based on the number of shares that you have on capital land say you have uh, 1000 share they're going to give you 1000 share of CLIM capital land investment management at the same time, they are going to give you the uh, capital land integrated commercial trust shares. Okay. And uh, of course, uh, <clears throat> when, the, when you look at this, uh, this whole deal uh, package at uh, 4.10. So if you are looking at uh, the real uh, deal action, um, we are looking at, in fact, I did a calculation. Uh, um, the actual deal is only worth about four dollars. Okay, so 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 what you want to do or need to do? Okay, so for those uh, who are currently holding capital land and wish to be part, wish to be part of the deal, right? You you just need to continue to hold. So the uh, the the whole thing will conclude by Q four two zero two one. So uh, if you hold on till. Q4 2021, you will get uh, the new share at, uh, at the price of 280. So once the market lease that new entity, we're not sure uh, what is going to be the uh, price traded then. And then uh, at the same time, you will also get uh, the uh, CICT shares and uh, you are going to get some uh, cash uh, offer, cash uh, component as well. Let me just uh, find out what is the cash component Again, I can't exactly uh, remember. So the, the cash component, I believe some of you may already know uh, the restructuring deal. So the cash component that we are looking at is, um, yep, the cash component of 0 0.951. So uh, we add up the numbers, we have 2.8 to the value. Uh, component of the unlisted CLIM and then plus 0 0.951 that brings about um, 380, uh, 380 and then uh, we, we have the uh, component where uh, the CICT which is value about uh, 35 cents so it brings up to uh, be around uh, $4.10 so <clears throat> after doing some uh, discounted cash flow calculations uh, uh, we I find that the uh, the uh, value is about um, uh, $4. Uh, some more aggressive uh, discount will value this deal at 380. But we shall see. So the market is uh, valuing this deal at 380 for the time being because uh, it's still a long way to go. So uh, if uh, those who are interested in taking part, so anything that is below 380, some target at 365, uh, that could be a good catch for capital land. Okay. So for city development, uh, we are looking at uh, this um, candle, which is uh, telling us some bearish action where uh, it may have some selling going forward. So uh, it's very similar to uh, this uh, pattern. So we're going to see uh, where uh, city development is going to be. So the next candle right, uh, could be a black one below, which may signify more lower action. Uh, so the next few candles is going to be very important. Um, so from uh, city development uh, support and resistance, we can see that uh, 810 is going to be a very uh, important support, which was the previous uh, major resistance. So this uh, could be a major support as well. So if we pull back to this support, uh, just watch out for your next opportunity of entry. Uh, UOL. Uh, today it actually closed lower. So I was hoping that UL can close uh, above this uh, resistance at 803. Then this will certainly more outward action. Um, but then uh, it did not. But nevertheless, it's still close to the white candle. So we shall see tomorrow uh, what happened to uh, this counter. Okay. So uh, with this, I, I actually conclude the uh, Singapore portions uh, for us to watch out. So uh, generally, the market is still bullish. Uh, if there's any selling action coming in in mid-April, uh, do watch out for it because of the MSCI Rebalancing Act. Okay.
Um, let's uh, go to the uh, US market. <clears throat> so we sh let's start off with NASDAQ. So we can see uh, the NASDAQ chart over here where we are looking at a breakout last Thursday before the holiday break, uh, NASDAQ actually had a nice breakout. And uh, if the uh, history repeats itself, uh, we can see here there was a strong sell down and, re and it rebounded and start to hit high before it started to pull back or even uh, we could be something like that. Um, we may see uh, NASDAQ hitting back to uh, highs like here at uh, 13,674 or 13,878 and then or go even higher breaking a new time all time high again okay uh the dow jones uh, is consolidating forming a flat pattern uh, waiting for the next round of breakout uh s&p 500 uh, is even better it is all time high now booking uh it has uh uh, broke out from its uh, resistance and uh, trading at the all-time high looking at uh, probably more upward action uh, going forward so out of the three index NASDAQ is still the weakest um, but um, NASDAQ may recover uh, while the two uh, index start to pull back so this happens uh, quite some time back uh, once I actually remember uh, that NASDAQ was the only uh, index that pulled back while the, the Dow and S&P went up and then um, S&P 500 and Dow pulled back and NASDAQ actually went up. So uh, there is um, such a social relationship uh, in the past as well. So uh, we shall uh, see that uh, this may happen again. Uh, <clears throat> so I just want to go through some counters uh, that it's uh, that may have opportunities. So start off with Salesforce. Salesforce is uh, doing the, uh, you know, uh, the software which helps you to uh, manage your work better. Uh, CRM, right? I think I believe most of you would know uh, CRM. So you, if you look at the chart over here, uh, we have a uh, double bottom and we see a breakout over here. So if the uh, our momentum continues, we may see Salesforce goes into uh, a higher level. And the projected level is about 23 or uh, 234. Uh, and uh, we are looking at a potential um, change of trend going forward as well. So ultimately, Salesforce has a resistance to meet at about 251. So if you check out the earnings, like I shared with you the last time, uh, Salesforce uh, earnings has, has been pretty strong uh, quarter over quarter. So this is definitely one of the counters. Is this is one of the component stocks in NES, uh, the uh, New York Stock Exchange. I beg your pardon. Okay. <clears throat> then uh, Disney is also the uh, component stocks of uh, the Dow, and you can see that um, there's a, a turning over here. So you can see this white candle, and then uh, followed by another white candle over here. So uh, sandwich this. Uh, bearish uh, selling over here and uh, what we are looking at is a breakout above uh, 188 and uh, to target around uh, 196 as it continue higher now of course <clears throat> if it cannot break out over here it may form a double bottom before it rebound and eventually break out higher just like uh, what Salesforce has done um, the next is Tesla. Tesla has announced a uh, result that uh, it has uh, increased its deliveries and the earnings has uh, gone up. So the pre-market, as I checked, uh, was at about 711. So it's about here. So this is where the resistance is, 713. And uh, if <clears throat> Tesla can close above its resistance, then we can see a, uh, a nice uh, double bottom breakout as well. So if I were to do a projection, uh, Tesla can hit this uh, about 871. Where I just read the report today, uh, one of the uh, fund actually targeted Tesla to be trading at 950. So uh, th that's there about. Okay, so Tesla, if it can close higher, hopefully it's not a higher opening and a lower closing that may uh, spell uh, weakness in its upwards movement, uncertainty going forward. But then, uh, of course, <clears throat> um, it's still uh, yet to be known. So we shall see uh, what's going to happen tonight. Apple, Apple, we can see a, 
a consolidation side way and uh, is it is important for it to test uh, 127 where it can form a, a double bottom formation and uh, help it to change its trend to go higher towards resistance at 1 point, uh, 137, okay, 137. Okay. And uh, this is where uh, we can see a, a strong uh, potential uh, movement over here, struggle rather, um, prob probably uh, struggles uh, for it to pull back, then form higher low to go uptrend. So uh, Apple is also going to make its Apple car soon. And uh, let's see whether uh, Tesla can bring it uh, higher. Then of course, uh, many would also think about Neo and Xiaopeng or Xpeng, right? Uh, so Neo, of course, um, we can see it, it is uh, in the middle of the, the price action where um, it has to test for the six to form its double bottom formation. Okay, so if it can go back there uh, here to 46, uh, do watch out for it. And then of course, Xpeng has a double bottom formation already. So we can see here, uh, double bottom. And uh, tonight, watch out for the breakout $38. And uh, the projected level could be seeing this counter trading around $51, 51, all right? Next, uh, we, let's take a look at the bullish sector, like the semiconductors. Uh, Micron has announced a very strong set of results, uh, positive outlook, and uh, it has gone up on uh, Friday, probably able to test resistance tonight at 95.77. Um, if it breaks up from 95, 77, um, the resistance, higher resistance 97 only. And if it breaks above 97 all time high, then we can project, uh, probably do some slight projection if you can break out. So we have uh, more upward movement towards uh, this 109 mark. Okay. And uh, applied materials is very strong uh, related to Singapore UMS. Uh, this could be the reason why UMS is still uh, positive today. So uh, it's very strong. So we have to wait patiently for the pullback to happen. So you can see here, uh, AMAC was very strong and then it pulled back before it got. So this will be your opportunity, window opportunity. So uh, let's wait for your window opportunity patiently. NVIDIA broken up from its double bottom formation here. And uh, it has a uh, projection, not really a double bottom, I would say. I beg your pardon. Uh. So uh, because this low and this low is pretty far, um, I would say that, you know, you're looking at more like more ascending pattern. So, but uh, nevertheless, uh, if it continue higher, well, it's set to retest this resistance at 614 and uh, the the uh, potential range of trading is here. So let's watch whether it can continue higher. So either it, it pull back, it go up higher and pull back and find this at support level at 540 before it goes back to uh, 619 uh, or it uh, straight away go to 619. Now, uh, Boeing is one of the um, company that or the stock that is going to uh, benefit from the uh, reopening of economies going forward. As you can see, the trend is still uh, trending up. So generally is moving up with support level around uh, 232 resistance at 277, uh, 278. So uh, um, we can see that generally going is relatively uh, low right now because uh, it went to a high of 435. So we can see that in the near term, uh, Boeing seems to be struggling to go higher. So if Boeing cannot go higher, instead it pull back and then rebound, of course you can look for an opportunity to capture this counter over at this range and before it continue higher. So uh, we can uh, look out for a better entry for Boeing going forward. And uh, last but not least, uh, infrastructure spending is going to go up uh, as what Biden, uh, President Biden says. So uh, we shall see whether uh, Caterpillar break up from 238. If we break up from 238, the, uh, 
it's all time high. So the projected level maybe, maybe is going to be around 258. So uh, take the opportunity to capture the uh, uptrending movement from uh, Caterpillar. Okay, Caterpillar, as you know, uh, provides the uh, heavy machineries to build the infrastructure. Okay, so with this, uh, I uh, finished my uh, recording and then I hope that you enjoy uh, the video, this part of the video. And uh, I hope that, um, you know, uh, the US market uh, can go higher so that we can uh, make more uh, profits from it. Okay, so uh, for the rest of the week, take care and then uh, see you next week.